Welcome to this episode of Eureka. We are having a very interesting guest today for this episode of Eureka. We are with us Vaidya Kartha Singh Diman, Director General of Central Council for Ayurvedic Sciences of uh, Ministry of Ayush. We are going to have a very, very interesting discussion with him about Ayurveda and how it can help in progressing human life and reducing human misery. Before we get into the discussion, let's have a small brief about his uh, biography. As the field of our ancient medication is gaining popularity, Ayurveda is also emerging as a new alternative for modern health treatments. The Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences is an initiative under Ayush Ministry promoting the traditional sciences for the cure of various ailments. And its Director General, Professor Kartar Singh Dheeman, who comes from a remote village of Himachal Pradesh, is constantly working to develop new Ayurvedic drugs. His area of research is mainly focused on eye-related diseases. Professor Dheeman has been conferred several noted awards for his outstanding work. He has held eminent positions in the Ayurvedic fraternity and has authored various research papers. Welcome sir, thank you. Thank you for joining us in the show. It's uh, wonderful that you have been able to spare time and then be with us. It's my privilege. Thank you very much. Let me start with a question uh, which uh, is perhaps in the minds of uh, most of our viewers. If today a young person chooses medicine as his career and wants to pursue medicine, you know, after finishing 12th, most likely the person is going to choose what today we might call as modern medicine. It's only if you don't get, you choose uh, something like Ayurveda. But then you have chosen Ayurveda and also excelled in it. What made you do that? Actually, to be a doctor was uh, the last wish of my late father, who has expressed this wish to a doctor mm -hmm. uh, from whom he was taking treatment that I wanted that, I wish that one of my sons should be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, this responsibility was bestowed on my shoulders by my mother and my elder brother. And uh, to be very true, from a very remote village background in Himachal Pradesh, I was not knowing what is medicine. You are oh. from Himachal Pradesh? Yeah. So, I was not knowing what is MBBS and what is BMS and what is Yunani and what is Siddha. Mm -hmm. And as, a, as a, I passed my 12th standard, mm -hmm. Uh, my brother asked me that uh, this is the prospectus for a Ayurvedic college admission. Mm -hmm. You fill it and uh, this is the day of interview and you appear there and, and I got it. And the day when I got it, I accepted it by heart. Later on I came to know that another was, there was another uh, uh, stream for medicine. But I, whatever I got, I accepted by heart and I worked hard to be uh, and this way I came to this profession. In some sense, uh, your father's illness kind yeah. of impelled you into uh, taking Cer medicine certainly, as your certainly. Uh, profession. Why father's illness compelled me to come, impelled me to come into this field that uh, the doctor who was treating him, mm. he used to come to my village once in a week. Once in a week? Once in a week from 70-80 kilometers away uh -huh. from Punjab. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a source of medication for my village. And uh, I think that was the reason my father has wished that uh, if my son becomes doctor, then he, he will work in this village and he will give the services to the poor people. That's a the... very nice thought uh, for a father to have when uh, he himself is suffering from a illness. disease and illness. And uh, perhaps uh, he also lost his life in battling that disease, I suppose. Yeah. Right? So I graduated from Himachal. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a government Ayurveda college, Paprola, in Palampur uh, Valley. Okay. Then I post-graduated from Gujarat Ayurveda University in ophthalmic uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. And uh, immediately after getting my post-graduation, I got a job in the same college from where I graduate, graduated. And I taught there 16 years. I started the post-graduate department of ophthalmology there. And then I shifted because uh, there was a limitation in research in the state government. Then I 
and shifted to a central government institute in Gujarat Ayurveda University, mm -hmm. uh, Jamnagar, that is Institute for Postgraduate Teaching and Research. Mm -hmm. And I had been professor and a director in that institution and uh, I upgraded that uh, department of ophthalmology where uh, all ultra-modern facilities of research were there and I uh, continued my research there. There is a very interesting uh, point uh, which emerges from what you said to now. Uh, you studied to become a doctor and most doctors treat patients. Okay? But then you shifted from merely treating patients into also doing research. How did this interest in research come about? Uh, first of all, uh, during my graduation itself, I decided that I will become a teacher first. Okay. Because the number of doctors in the available for the public are very less. So I wanted that more and more should come. And I tell you very frequently, after I completed five years of my job, mm -hmm. my village itself has two, three practitioners. Okay. And uh, that, that, that was a good thing for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, to, motiv to be motivated for research, mm -hmm. during my graduation as well as uh, while I started my career as a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, the question of evidence-based mm -hmm. medicine was emerging. Okay. And everyone was... Uh, uh, saying that where is the research data, where is the evidence. Mm -hmm. No doubt, whatever literature we have uh, uh, for the traditional systems and Ayurveda is rich in literature, 5,000 year, five, 5, year older literature in Sanskrit language is there. And each and every word written in that literature is after a long, long research and experience. It is there. But the perspective of the science changed. The understanding, way of understanding changed. And they wanted in the modern language. Okay. And that motivated me a lot. And as and when I got a postgraduate department while working in Himachal, I started little, little experiments. And the very uh, unique experiment which I took forward was developing a eye ointment from the scalp hairs, okay. head hairs mm -hmm. for dry eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this project was funded by Government of India. And uh, I was the first person in that college to get a, a grant in aid for research. Before uh, we elaborate on that, uh, you used a concept, evidence-based medicine. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us? I'm sure uh, they're all interested to know what is this? What do you mean by evidence-based medicine? Uh, evidence-based medicine means uh, whatever you claim, you must have a documented evidence for that. Mm -hmm. Suppose there is a one formulation, very important form formulation, and we say that this is effective in uh, intestinal colic. Mm -hmm abdominal pain, mm -hmm. but it is written long back, whether it is relevant today or not. Okay. You must have the standards of that medicine. Mm -hmm. You should have the preclinical study of safety as, uh, also, mm -hmm. because those ingredients may be toxic to the today's generation, yeah. mm -hmm. because the biological profile is also changing. Okay. And secondly, uh, thirdly, you must give a, uh, have a clinical trial mm -hmm. to know that whether it is working in the intestinal colic or not. And after they're getting that evidence, you document it and you publish it. Mm. And that is evidence-based medicine. That's very interesting. Uh, we'll continue this discussion, but uh, we'll take a very small break. And then we'll pursue about uh, your research in uh, Ayurveda, which I'm sure our audience will be very, very keen to know. We'll take a very short break. Don't go away. We are going to have a very interesting discussion. <music> Welcome back to this episode of Ireka. We are having a very interesting discussion with Vaid Deeman, who is also the Director General of Central Institute of Ayurvedic Sciences of the Ministry of Ayush Government of India. Let me ask you uh, this question. Suppose if I say that in your long innings of about more than two to three decades of uh, your career, what are the three major work you would like to focus? The foremost, as I told you, with a small experiment I did on dry eye, Mm -hmm. uh, I completed that project under uh, grant in aid from Ministry of Ayush mm -hmm. and uh, the ointment I developed, I tried on uh, 120 patients mm -hmm. uh, under uh, a uh, controlled uh, uh, randomized clinical trial and I found that the evaporative type of dry eye mm -hmm. can be equally treated by this Ayurvedic formulation which was documented in the 5th, 6th century uh, uh, by our ancient seers. Mm -hmm. That was the one. 
and that medicine we are uh, i am further taking through the central council for research in ayurvedic sciences mm -hmm. for further r and d so that it can be brought into the market so what is this uh, medicine which was documented uh, many centuries ago uh, th th this famous? is under the name of kesh anjan okay anjan means collyrium which we apply in the eye kesh uh -huh. means the scalp hairs uh -huh. and uh, after burning in a closed chamber the these uh, uh, hairs mm -hmm. it is mixed with cow's ghee Mm -hmm. and uh, in a fixed proportion it is mixed and this it comes out as a ointment and it is to be applied only once in a day once in a day once in a day and it gives a effect for 24 hours okay uh -huh. and uh, the early evaporation of the tears can be checked by this mm -hmm. ointment the other achievement uh, which i got in uh, uh, my research career mm -hmm. is uh, in glaucoma 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 what is glaucoma glaucoma in general term we understand that when intraocular pressure uh, increases then this is this is termed as glaucoma but with that uh, also there is a degeneration or damage to the our retinal that is a photosensitive layer so of the eye so it's basically like uh, eye is like a ball yeah and inside the eye there is some liquid that is filled filled if more liquid uh, fills there then the eye becomes pressurized Press, pressurized you know like a pressure cooker <clears throat> yeah that is and this damages the uh, nerve cells nerve cells that's what is glaucoma yeah yeah uh, the, the two uh, angles for treatment in the glaucoma is required mm -hmm. to lower the intraocular pressure okay and to nourish the nerve layer uh -huh, uh -huh. and the check the damage of the nerve wear okay. and sometime in glaucoma one type of glaucoma is normotensive glaucoma uh -huh. in that case pressure remains same uh -huh. but even then the nerve damage is going on okay uh -huh. so these are um, many uh, other issues uh -huh. so nerve layer damage protection is one of the target area in glaucoma okay for which modern science has a very 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 limitation but our science has a many things to give and uh, under this uh, uh, research program mm -hmm. i took this issue mm -hmm. and uh, automated perimetry we did and uh, retinal uh, sensitivity test was also done and uh, oct was also performed with the help of uh, uh, my modern uh, colleagues uh, in the research collaboration eye surgeons, eye surgeons. Uh -huh. and we found that uh, the we can recover the lost sensitivity of the retina mm -hmm. up to 12 to 15 decibels Okay. and that was the achievement and uh, after this initial initiation of work i have to shift to the council and uh, now we are going to start in the uh, council a one separate unit mm -hmm. of the council for eye research that is in lucknow okay. and we will take these uh, research activities further to substantiate it and to document it and bring into the uh, as viable a medical viable practice, medical practice uh, also and uh, the third one is a very challenging disease which is uh, incurable in the ancient literature also mm -hmm. and in modern also that is retinitis pigmentosa okay where what the is that actually retinitis pigmentosa the uh, uh, rods uh, cone cells of the retina mm -hmm. the sensitive cells of the retina mm -hmm. they start degenerating so when they this start degenerating then uh, two things happens i mean you can't see color colors and second the peripheral vision goes, goes off and your vision becomes a tunnel tubular vision yeah. tunnel vision and ultimately patient loses mm -hmm. the vision no doubt we agree that it is incurable mm -hmm. but in our literature ayurved science says that uh, if the treatment is started early in early stage mm -hmm. we can arrest the progress okay and we can delay this damage of the loss of vision mm -hmm. and that trial i did and so we, which mean that uh, the patient can perhaps have uh, maybe uh, impaired vision but at yeah. least for quite some time yeah yeah, yeah. but in that case mm -hmm. a help from the uh, ophthalmic fraternity is required mm -hmm. it is not that when patient has ultimately gone blind by retinitis pigmentosa you sent to the ayurved yeah, yeah, people yeah. no mm -hmm. once it is diagnosed everyone know that we have nothing to give he should be subjected for ayurved intervention and that intervention can make his life less miserable more happy that that is that is what my achievement was there mm -hmm. and that protocol uh, we started in jamnagar mm -hmm. and uh, our other centers in uh, uh, south india in kerala especially mm -hmm. they are doing the same practice and we are delaying the progress of the uh, damage of the retina as well as uh, loss of the vision that is Very interesting thing. i mean uh, you you are working on uh, three important areas all connected with eye perhaps yeah. uh, that's what is uh, your central focus yeah uh, eye and vision uh, which is very interesting 
given the fact that uh, a large number of blind people in the world live in India. Yeah. Vision impaired people uh, actually live in India. I mean, it's, I think, an uh, important challenge to uh, work on. You are now the Director General of the Council for uh, Ayurvedic Research, Sciences. Sir. Research in Ayurvedic Sciences. How many institutes are there today in India which actually actively pursue research, uh, modernizing Ayurvedic practices to fit uh, modern uh, demands? Uh, we have uh, uh, 30 units under my council, okay. uh, all across the country, right from Jammu and Kashmir, Kanyakumari, and from uh, west in Ahmedabad to uh, right up to Gangtok mm -hmm. and Nagaland. Mm -hmm. We have 30 units. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, our council is uh, engaged in four dimensional research. Okay. And that is one is validation of the uh, written documents. Mm -hmm. Whatever in literature, medicines are written, we are revalidating those medicines. Okay. Okay. We are also developing new drugs. Okay. Uh -huh. Likewise, we developed Ayush 82, mm -hmm. one of the potential drug for diabetes, diabetes, okay. mm -hmm. uh, uh, two type of uh, diabetes mellitus. Yeah. And uh, likewise, uh, many other IU 64 for mm -hmm. this new drug development is also one of the area. Mm -hmm. That is clinical trial, mm -hmm. drug development. Then uh, survey of the medicinal plants. Okay. These we are we are taking all across the country. And fourth one is uh, uh, the literary research. Still there there are many manuscripts okay. scattered across the country. Mm -hmm. We are bringing them after digitalization to one center. And uh, there is one scheme. Uh, these all digitalized manuscripts are available on our portal. Whosoever feels fit that I can do the transcription, translation, and a critical commentary on this uh, this uh, this manuscript they they put their proposal and we finance them and we explore new and new things let's take a very short break don't go away we are having a very interesting conversation welcome back to this episode of eureka we are having a very interesting conversation with uh, vaid diman director general of ayurvedic sciences research Thank you, sir. It's a very interesting discussion that we were having. Before the break, we were discussing about how you are setting up a research standards so that the drugs developed, whether it's a old drug or a new drug, will be efficacious and also safe. Can you just elaborate on this? Uh, there are uh, skepticism mm. among the medical fraternity that uh, the traditional medicines, Ayurvedic medicine, uh, are having certain... Uh, minerals and metal material mm -hmm. and that skepticism has uh, arisen looking into that uh, part yes, perspective. for example heavy metals like yeah heavy metals and, and uh, yeah and uh, the whatever we use mm. there is a very specific process and it is well uh, standard operational procedure documented in the literature and following all those uh, standards this medicine is prepared and uh, it is also documented that whatever some of the ingredients uh, in the medicines are uh, schedule one or toxic like of substances and a very particular um, uh, this uh, guidelines are there how to make it pure mm. non-toxic before it is used in the medicine okay and that process is followed and after Following that process, that medicine is prepared. And uh, to remove that skepticism, now we are doing the experimental studies on experimental models mm -hmm. as well as on cell lines mm -hmm. uh, to see the safety as well as to see the efficacy. And then and then this medicine is brought to the... So, like uh, for example, any uh, modern medicine that comes into market goes through certain uh, research process and uh, test processes. Yeah. The Ayurvedic drugs are also put to similar uh, standards yeah, before yeah. it is marketed. By yeah, yeah. No, no, not only this, mm -hmm. what we have now uh, done in our uh, council, mm -hmm. that whatever the dosier of uh, standardization and safety efficacy comes from experimental level, mm -hmm. before taking it to the clinical trial, mm -hmm. we invite a very senior scientist group mm -hmm. in which pharmacologists are there, practitioners are there, in which statisticians are there, and uh, they decide how many people are to be tested for this. And the pharmacologists, they see for 
the validity of whatever the preclinical study you have done, safety study you have done, you have met all the criteria. If they give a node, yes node, yes, yes, this can be taken forward, then and then we go for that. Interesting point. Uh, this place, I would like to kind of shift our discussion to a certain other area. In the middle of uh, 1960s, Mao, who was then the leader of uh, China, declared that the traditional medicine of China is a treasure house. Yeah. And then he said that we should integrate the traditional medicine and the modern medicine so that we are able to give better treatment to the people. Yeah. He said that the modern medicine is not reaching the people. And the traditional medicine, perhaps uh, there are a lot of spurious stuff. I mean, he was uh, claiming that uh, snake oil and things of that kind. I mean, he was also jovially commenting upon certain uh, practices in China. Today, if you look at People say that Chinese traditional medicine is what has been advanced and integrated with modern medicine to a great extent. In fact, if you look at uh, the recent uh, Nobel Prize by… Uh, that went to China. Yeah, that went to uh, Tutu yeah. for discovering artemisin, which is a very effective drug against uh, malaria, which has been drawn from that Chinese traditional medicine. Yeah. Shows uh, there is a huge potential. Yeah, yeah. There is a uh, Indian traditional medicines, Yunani, Ayurveda, Siddha. There are African medicines, there are uh, South American medicine. There is huge potential out in the world. What do you think we should be doing in India? Uh, the, you rightly you pointed out the achievement of a Nobel Prize in medicine hmm. by China is a result of the integration of the traditional medicine in main healthcare center yeah. uh, system. And I think we lagged in it. All, no doubt, I appreciate the post-independent government's initiatives, but those initiatives uh, uh, would have been taken in a, in a vigorous uh, manner, which was lacking. And uh, till date also, the funds for the traditional systems are not adequate. And uh, secondly, what when this integration from the uh, government side happened, then the modern people also started learning about traditional systems, knowing about it. And uh, you will agree with me that uh, it remained for 50 years after independence, the traditional systems were kept away from the mainstream. Not only to integrate, but no one was ready to listen. And only and only the integration of both systems uh, can take place when we understand both sciences. Yeah. If modern science uh, uh, understands the concepts and the viewpoints in the perspective which the medicine is said to be effective, then and then we can go in a, a right way, in a short time with less resources in research. And uh, China since uh, before 60s has uh, a single uh, window for research. There are no, no two windows. No ICMR and CCRS and traditional system. Mm -hmm. They have a single window of research, health research. And uh, it means they are saving their resources. They are doing better. And I think this model should have been in our country also. And it is not late. And now the thrust and emphasis given by our present government is, uh, is uh, so challenging that we are in, at present scenario. I think, I feel that uh, we are not ready to deliver in the pace it is demanded from us, from our country as well as the foreign countries. It's an interesting point. You know, some people who have been uh, studying the Chinese uh, success uh, also pointed out, for example, China never uses the word Chinese traditional medicine. They call it as Chinese medicine. Chinese medicine. So the emphasis is not on the traditional, but is on the medicine. Medicine. That is something that you can prove with evidence for the modern times. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a kind of emphasis uh, that is given and then there is no unnecessary glorification or claiming that everything is right. There is a attempt to uh, be skeptical and then uh, examine, re-examine and open to challenges from anywhere in the world. I think that spirit is a very important spirit. And Certainly. If you actually look at, for example, uh, some of my friends who work on this uh, tell me that if you look at uh, texts like, for example, Sushadha's text or uh, Charaga's text, Yukti, that is reasoning, yeah. is an essential part of the medical test and then a medicine doctor is supposed to learn logic 
and reasoning. Yeah. Can you elaborate on this part? Uh, It's a very interesting point uh, that many people won't two, even two, know. Two things you have put together, mm -hmm. uh, I shall uh, answer one by one. Mm -hmm. uh, to the viewers' uh, perspective, I shall like to emphasize how Chinese got this uh, Nobel Prize mm -hmm. in a very, very short span. Yeah, yeah. When we prepare a decoction of any uh, plant material mm. in our literature, in traditional literature, because some part of the Chinese medicine has gone from India. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. In the literature, it is written that the while boiling a decoction, it should be very low heat. Heat. Yeah. Okay. And this this medicine development for malaria was going since last 20-30 years. But when she studied the traditional medicine, then she emphasized that oh, there is a lot of loss when we boil it on high temperature. Right, right. Then she boiled the same medicine on 50-60 de degree centigrade and then the medicine came out with effectiveness and that gave her the... So that is the viewpoint that I told that we must understand the science of both sciences. Yeah, yeah. The second point which you told about the yukti, mm -hmm. uh, as I told you earlier, whatever is documented, it is a outcome of the research and observations of thousands of years. But even then, our ancient seers told that we give you four tools. You examine everything by these four tools. Then you, if you are, uh, you get justified, then you use it. These are four pramanas, evidences. Pratyaksh, Anuman, Aptopadesh and Yukti. These are four pramanas. And Yukti is so important and whatever we are getting uh, as a indirect evidence after the deduction from the previous knowledge, that is known as yukti. yukti yeah. Whatever you are getting from the laboratory investigation and then you are translating into the healthcare, that is yukti. And that logical uh, evidence is one of the strong pillar of the uh, evidences uh, which we talk today and uh, that has to be used. And, uh, it is said for a Vaidya, if a Vaidya is uh, blessed by this, uh, this uh, sense of Yukti, he can never fail. That's a very interesting point. So the issue is not blind belief, but being curious by being scientific and rigorous. And that's exactly what the Ayurvedic text and the ancient Indian text points out. And that's a point, that's a line in which the uh, modern uh, researchers are being uh, taken forward. We are very thankful to you for this uh, very interesting conversation that uh, we are having with you in this uh, Eureka. I'm sure a lot of us, I mean, all of us learned quite a lot from this uh, conversation. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, there is not much time. There are a lot of things that we wanted to discuss, but uh, for lack of time, maybe we'll postpone it to another uh, discussion. Thank you for sparing and being with us. It's, my, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.